Think running a day spa is all massages and relaxation? (laughs) There is nothing relaxing about owning a day spa, but we're here to help. Siri Spa owners know that being in the spa business isn't for the weak. It takes hard work, planning, and just a bit of luck. We should know because we've owned a successful day spa for over 20 years. Now we're opening up our playbooks and giving you the business insights to run your day spa rather than letting it run you. This is a Spapreneur podcast with Lynn Graves and Ramona Rice. What's up, Spa Perneur? Hi there. It's a new day, and it's freaking cold here. And it's it, what? We're in June? Okay. It got super hot in April. Remember, it got super hot yeah, in April but and it's dry. It's 60 degrees. We're and in Virginia. And like the rain the other day, like Fox Hill Road flooded. Oh, this is crazy weather, but we're supposed to get really hot next week. So, well, we should be, be hot. stripping down the next nothing. Oh, God, help us all. <laughs> God help us all. We are the Spapreneurs. I'm Ramona Rice. That's Lynn Graves. She's also my mom and the kids. Sussy. The kids, Sussy. Um, you know, yeah, and you're taking um, the Anderson to the lake house this weekend. I am. And he doesn't know this. He's, he's 10. I got him a drone. And we're going to go to the winery because the fields are open so I can drink and get drunk. Well, get tipsy. Marinated. Marinated. That's a good word for it. And him and Dupa are going to fly the thingy. That'll yes. be fun for them. The drone. Yes. For him. Yeah. And then the little one, um, Addison, is going to Great Wolf Lodge to celebrate all Girl Scouting. And they were so funny. So and what's see, mommy going to do? Uh, uh, mommy is going to watch Mystery Nerd perform at the Murder Mystery Show at Push. Woo! It's a big show. It's a big deal that he was invited to um, participate. That's so I'm, cool. I'm, and it's Harbor Fest. So we're going to walk down. Harbor Fest is like this huge, huge, huge. Festival. festival all here. these like big ships come in it's really cool and so you we're, couldn't pay me enough to go down there well, we're gonna walk <laughs> down and we're going to um walk down in, in the cast of characters is gonna stay in character i believe oh, we're gonna fun. walk down and watch the fireworks oh fun so they're gonna get access to the characters oh. like they would normally and this is the thing they make up the show right away like they're improvisers so they don't have a set plan the trust only- me guys it's funny it's loud it's bawdy yeah. it's rowdy because they were practicing in my living room a couple of weeks ago right and we weren't even the good ones um so these are like the professional ones like oh, like the people cool. that own the theater so yeah having access like that for a lot of people because it's their big show um people are really excited about so fun, that's fun, fun you know and access is important in business anyway you know you need to be approachable for clients sure. you know especially in the spa business i mean i feel like in compared to anything else because we're such a touchy feeling business and because it, particularly when you have clients that you've had for years and years and years like we have, mm-hmm. you know, and you go through a lot of different things to them. We've been through clients, you know, it, it, like, just think about you. Clients have been with you through me going through high school, Rachel going through high I school. I was 36. Yeah. You were, you were a year younger than me. We all raised our children together. Yeah. My favorite was when Carol Abbott laid on the table, and her son is identical age of you, and you were both in your first year of college, and she laid down, and oh, how's Ramona doing in school? Because my son just got on, on in trouble. I think he's in a whatever, suspension or something. She was so upset. I'm like, well, Mona's struggling a little bit, too. She ain't happy with the school, and she wants to move to UVA, and... We raised our children together. And they all became grandmothers together. And We did, We buried people together. together. Yeah, you know, clients and loved ones. Not so. too long ago, Ed, who was one of my very first clients, um, his wife, she passed away. Yeah, and, after a long illness. And, and, yeah. You know, so we are a huge family. And um, I think that we're a huge family like that with our clients and all because I've always made myself accessible. Um my door is always open. Um, every now and then somebody will come in and I'm not going to name names because we've got this one lady who just emotionally sucks the crap out of us. And she'll, she will stop by my door and which I always leave open. Did you hear I had another accident? Oh my God. I'm so sorry. Oh, I got to go talk to Natasha real quick in the back room. I, I hope you'll be okay. And I run down the hall. Now that's a rare moment for me. Um, but I think it's important to sit down and talk to them. Um, you don't know this. I didn't tell Ramona about this, but I've got a client who's been with me forever. Mona grew, we raised our children together. Um, and we raised them through de-stress. 
So she's got some serious neck issues, and the doctor wants to do surgery. But this is an excellent, excellent doctor. I've known this woman inside and out for a year. Make a long story short, I sent her to a neuromuscular therapist who is pretty revered in our area as being the best. This therapist, one, did not even consult with the client. Two, did not listen to the client, berated the client the entire time, wanted to know how much water she drank and her posture, and you're going to have to come back to me 12 more times, and we'll see if we can get this fixed. She, my client, left out of there in tears, absolutely in tears, called me and said, can I come in and meet with you tomorrow? I said, absolutely. She came in the next day, and she sat down. She said, I got to tell you, you know, I've been um, diagnosed as being diabetic. She said, I'm trying to control it with diet, and she's lost like 20 pounds, and she was not a big lady to begin with. She only weighed like 140, and she said, I went home and ate a whole bag of potato chips because I was so upset. Oh, no. She said, I did not realize until that moment how much you guys really care. She said, y'all truly care about us here, and that's what that accessibility gives them is that reassurance and that love uh yeah it it was everything to me to hear that from her mouth well and it's so sad that you know because when we send somebody outside of our studio outside of our spa i won't ever do it again no but i mean it's just it's it's sad because you know people 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 you know it's just in access you can have access and not like i am a little more reserved around the clients she is she's still trying to prove that she's the adult around there well not even that but i think after james died i needed to i I, i'm not as before you know i worked there before james died you know and i was a little more open now i just can't i I just not an emotional headspace still where i can handle it it, yeah, it, it, but it, and all of our clients went through that with us, and oh, yeah, they, they and they were there to support. God, a lot of them were actually at the funeral. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's bring this all the way back to accessibility. Right. How accessible do you really want to be? I'm a touchy feely, lovey, up in your business kind of woman. I tell people when they come in and when uh, I hire them, don't tell me something you don't want other people to know. I'm not a gossip, but my mouth gets to going, and all of a sudden I go, oh, shit, I probably shouldn't have said that. Yeah, that does happen. So, but that's that's my personality. That's how I run. And I want to tell the world how to run their business. So I'm always out in the lobby giving advice, and I've had to learn as I age a little bit that not everybody wants to hear it. So I, I, I ask myself. Should I really say this or not? This is why I gave you a podcast, so you could get it all out here. <laughs> no, that's why they stuck me in an office. We closed down one of the rooms. They stuck me in an office. We did stick her in an office, but, you know. But now I'm actually there. getting work done. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that, that, too. Um, I, I'm in one of those that it just depends on, I think it's specific to the client. Some clients, you're going to be more accessible to than others for various reasons. But you have to, it's kind of like, there's two types of accessibility you as if you're a owner you've got accessibility to clients accessibility to your staff i'm one of those that i like i have a line in the sand and say okay i'm gonna let you in this far but there's a professional relationship we have to deal that's my age i'm only 37 so i have to for the client's sake and for the oh therapist's sake you're the same age i was uh-huh. when i started it yeah oh, yeah yeah um one of the things is, is particularly with the with the therapist and the clients is that i can't um you know, I don't like to mix business pleasure. I'm not going to go hang out with a client outside of work. I'm not going to hang out with a therapist outside of work unless everybody's there. I try not to. Yeah. And I have crossed that line a time or two. But I will say, though, that I have fired one of my best friends. Mm-hmm. And I had to do it for the company. And I, I don't. I'm close to them at work, but honest to God, I don't have time outside of work to be buddy buddy with everybody. I just, I, I can barely keep up with this family of yeah. mine here. So I, I might occasionally go out for drinks with them, and they love that because they're like, "Whoa, let's get the boss drunk." Okay, we're going to Uber at home. Yeah, that's different. And and to think sometimes you need to do that because you need to know what's going on for your, 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 your you staff. I tell you what's really fun. Oh, you, no. Let me tell you. Sitting in that damn break room, the therapist theater, and hearing all that's going on in their life, that's fun. I've gotten to where I do that a little bit more often just because it's so damn entertaining. Yeah, that that's really good. And and also, too, it helps us know what's going on. But And that's why we also sit in the lobby with the clients. We just want to know what's going on. 
Yeah, you know, I want to know. I, I've got one client whose granddaughter was in a, a major accident over a year ago, and we didn't think she was going to make it. So every time she came in, I would notice on the book, and I would go sit outside and say, "How how's your granddaughter? How's it going? What's going on? Mm-hmm. Um, showing that you're genuinely caring about them, not the money. Let me say, you're going to hear this from me on these podcasts so many times. Forget about the friggin' money. Satisfy the client. The money will follow. Okay, don't be stupid about it and give all your services away, but satisfy the client's emotional needs. No, you're not a psychologist, but we can smile and give a hug and say, I'm here for you Mm -hmm. and give good service. The money will follow, folks. Yeah, so long as you set your prices and you keep your, you know, your policies in place where, you know, you honor yourself and you honor the clients when you enforce the no-show policy because... I, I I look at it this way. When you book an appointment with somebody, you are saying no to every other client you have. You're saying that client, get, this client gets that spot. So when that client doesn't honor that spot, they're dishonoring all your other clients mm-hmm. by not showing up. So you know what? You need to charge them. Well, yeah. But and now I've said this before, too, though. If they call and even say to me, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I forgot. I get it. We're human. Yeah, that's different. I get it. That's different. Now but they do don't it. don't do not it. call me. Yeah. And they consistently do it. That's one thing. Oh, and that's a whole nother But that's a whole other thing. But th- what I'm saying is, is that if you have the access and they can get a hold of you. So, you know what? This is what I tell people. You don't want to be 24-7 available to your clients. That's that's unrealistic. And you're going to burn out. You are not their therapist. You're not their doctor. You're, their, you're you know, their, their massage therapist. You are their esthetician. But being accessible to answer questions, particularly if, like, you know, you tried a new product on them, a new modality, um, they're just coming for skin treatment, you want to follow up, you yes. want to make sure they're doing okay, and you want to say, look, if you've got any questions, this is how you reach me. Here's my direct email. You know, do something where they can get a hold of you and answer questions, because that's going to build a much closer relationship than you just saying, okay, I'll see you in two weeks. Other than telemarketers. The front desk knows that if a client calls and says, can I talk to Lynn, they know to come to me and say, blah, blah, is on the phone. We managed to turn around a situation not too long ago where a client who'd been a longtime client called and said, I came in yesterday and the girl I had, she, while she was good and she was very sweet, she just didn't do what I asked her to. And that was to work on my glutes. And I wanted some really deep work. And I was blown away when I saw who it was she was talking about because I call this girl the butt master. Ah. It's Kat, and she's just she's amazing at hips, at, glutes. at hips and lower back work. Yeah. And so I said, well, Carol, I don't understand what happened here. I think there must have been miscommunication. Please come back in and see her one more time. This is going to be on me. Please come back in because I promise you she's who I go to for glutes. She did. And they talked it out again. And what had happened was the client had said, now, I bruise easily and, you know, it hurts me sometimes. So Kat, being proper, did not go in deep. Now she knows that she needed to communicate more. And Carol, the client, had the responsibility of communicating. She's now a solid client of Kat's, loves Kat. So we took that accessibility and turned it around. But had they not been comfortable enough to talk to you, had you not built that rapport, we might have lost that client forever. Yeah, we probably would have. Because face it, folks, there are are alternatives out there, um, not as good as us, but Uh. they're out there. But you've got to be accessible even to the calls, which we talked about a few episodes ago, of the lady who insisted on getting on Henry's table, I listened to her for 15 minutes and finally said, I will have Henry call you. Now, in the end, we're going to make the decision, or I did make the decision, to fire the woman. Um, she has not decided what she's going to do yet. But you you have to put your big girl, big boy pants on and handle these kind of calls. I have this older couple. They're from New York. And they're Jewish, and and they I, hi. This is Harvey. I Harvey. love them so. Well, much. Harvey is becoming a pain in the ass. But we like Harvey. So he's so much of a pain in the ass. He will call on Tuesday mornings, Harvey, and demand Harvey. an appointment for him and his wife for ninety minutes Tuesday night. Why well, don't always have those appointments? So now he's blaming me. You just don't have enough therapist. Well, Harvey, I'm not going to hire the trash man off the street to do massage therapy. You know, I don't do his job. He doesn't do my job. So what do you want me to do? I finally had to resolve it and say, Harvey, I'm going to give you my phone number. Of course, folks, I did not say it to him in that tone of voice. 
but I'm getting close to it. <laughs> so I gave him my cell phone number and said, Harvey, anytime you have a problem, just give me a call. And I'm just dreading. I, I know it's coming. And I'm just going to have to, I, I, it is my job to retrain him to understand you got to call a few days ahead of time. Or if they know that they like to come in once a month on Tuesdays, make a standing appointment. I, I'm going to try to do something. But 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 it's my job to be accessible. Yeah. Not the therapist, not the front desk to listen to all that. They are the channel through which those people get to me. Mm-hmm. And there is a point where you're too accessible. We've talked about this in the past where we've had clients who had, cl- you know, clients and they were texting back and forth and wives found out oh my god we were just talking about this last night when i was getting a massage i was getting a couple's massage with my husband so we were cutting up and having a lot of fun talking stories and jen was telling the story of how the husband would come in in his pajamas no less because it it was the last one and she would text him joking around and the wife came in and called her a slut yep that actually i needed to know that i have a slut on my staff i'm like oh my God, I just, all I could say was, I'm so sorry. I will talk to this slut and tell her to <laughs> cut it out. <laughs> she's still with me and she's my master therapist and she's awesome. She's, she's just young but, and, but and enthusiastic, learned. but she was communicating improperly. If you're going to communicate with the husbands, you sure shit better be communicating with the wives too. Yeah. And just be honest and, and upfront. We've had a couple where, you know, we had the one text with the guy who claimed, you know, can massage help with impotence and we're all like... How do we handle you with that? You know what? I, I'm glad that I was accessible through that and then I, I got into the middle of that because he truly was trying to figure out a holistic way of of helping his body. Right. And because the one therapist was too young to really handle it, I think she's only like 26 or something, she just wasn't comfortable. But the more I talked to him, the more I realized, no... He was not coming on to her. He was merely trying to figure out things in his wife. And because we work with his naked body, he felt comfortable talking. So now he sees somebody else. But that, that took some finessing to get through. But that's but that's one of those things. You're constantly... His wife was there the whole time. Yeah, but that, and that's the thing. You know, you just have to, when in doubt, be accessible. But just know there are limits. Remember your ethics training. There's a reason why you have to renew that ethics, ethics training. Oh my God! <laughs> okay, so so Lynn, she got her massage certification so long ago. I'm grandfathered in. She's grandfathered it's in, sick. so she doesn't really have to. And do... I have a really body sense of humor. Yeah. I mean, come on, folks! I work with naked bodies all day long. Okay, I have for twenty something years. Okay, so so do they? So do they? So let's let's respect this. But Go you know, my your... favorite saying is, "Oh Jesus!" To get people, <laughs> to get people to stand up straight. They get the concept. I tell them titties, titties up. Tits up. She said that to me at high school. <laughs> but prom. it works. It makes you straight like, your we're, back. So we're there in prom dresses and in front of other parents. My mom's like, all right, girls, tits up. I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. My mother said it to me and I said it to you. And you yes. will say it to your daughter Cause, cause, too one day. Yes, because Grandma Tigger was the ideal <laughs> vision of motherhood. Um Anybody wants to join our family, we're kind of fun. <laughs> and we're not even drinking. This is in the morning. Yeah, I know. This is in the morning. So Ooh, we need to do a show where we've been drinking a little bit. I don't drink anymore. Damn. I do. This could be fun. Oh, God, help us. <laughs> Maybe we'll let, we'll let like Rebecca come. Rebecca from Badass Body Workers come and guess. Well, we'll, we'll go down to her. I want to go to Louisiana. Yeah, but I'm not going until it's cooler weather because yeah. it's too damn co- they, hot down they there. They got skeeters that are size of like, you know, like dragonflies. They have in cockroaches. They <laughs> walk on a leash. And that's the Florida State bird. Yes. I grew up down there. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Okay, spapreneurs, if you've got any questions about this, you know, because we, I have had coaching calls where I've heard from spa owners say, well, you know, and, and the accessibility between them and the staff was too much. Um, if, yeah, but too much for you because you're too tired and you can't handle it. Maybe you're in the wrong position. No, it was too much where they took on their the therapist's emotional problems. Oh as their no, own. you can't do that. Can't do that. Uh, uh-uh. no. Well, she. Had, I remember who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so you know, I, I gave her you know good advice of going. You did. Yeah. No, this is you did nothing wrong. This is they. I like to hire them knowing that they're fairly stable to begin with because if, when you hire them and they have. Of issues issues those issues are only going to get bigger and especially in the room you have to be so careful when you put your hands on people because all your issues outside come inside oh my god so yeah you got to be careful with that yeah we we need no issues sussy and i have enough for everyone <laughs> 
I have no issues. I will have you know. <laughs> okay. So, but if you want some Other advice. Than my butt cheek, my, still, the, my left hip is killing me and all my therapists have worked on it. Oh, is that TMI? That's TMI. Okay. If you have any advice for Sessie's left butt cheek, you can send it to hello at spotpreneur.com. I would love to hear what people are saying about that. I guarantee. I think it's my lat. You think it's your lat? Yeah, I do. I think it's my lat. Maybe it's your psoas. No, we've had that worked on. Ugh. We've worked on everything else. Now the we're ili- going to start working on the lat. The iliopsoas is an evil muscle. I hate it, it very evil, much. But- Especially if you have to get it worked on. <laughs> Okay, that was way off topic. And all the massage therapists that are listening right now are going, oh, yes, amen. But admit, yeah, but we're not wrapping this up because I got a chiropractic appointment. Because <laughs> now that's my next step. Even though I haven't seen my chiropractor. So, yay, yeah. me. Um, go to spotpreneur.com forward slash coaching. You can sign up for one-on-one coaching with me. We do have coaching programs at various different price ranges. The, um, we've got a six-week boot camp jumpstart where we really jumpstart your business. I go in there. We go all the way up to, if you can afford it. There's a program called the Four Cornerstones where I will actually fly out to your day spa and secret shop you and really give you poop scoop. And that's a 12 week program where we really, no, that's 24 week program where we really dive in deep and mm-hmm. we get into your business. And trust me, this is investment. Luckily it's a tax write off. Yay. <laughs> um, but the other thing is, is that when you invest in your business, when you bring an outside person in, number one, I am not emotionally invested in you per se. So I'm not going to give you advice that is no, false. No, but we're also excited to see yeah. you succeed because it, it, it's just, it's such a wonderful business and nothing worse than seeing a spa owner we we had um a spa that closed here last year just sh- actually had the door shut down on them because they were not running it correctly not unethically but financially just financially they weren't and, and they, they got, had a good they plan were shut down and the, and it was and it's a shame because I, every time an independent spa closes that means one more pizza hut of massage opens up yeah so and that is our job is to stop them. And there's nothing more joyful than being acknowledged for doing a good job and having a, a, a nice business. So yeah, and the way you have that is you have clients that call you up because you're accessible, and they say we love you. Yeah, I, I just God, I love my clients. Yeah, I do. I, I love my de-stress clients. All twenty thousand of them. Yep, yep, I do. All right. I love them. Uh, for more information about the coaching program, go to spapreneur.com forward slash coaching. And again, remember, guys, we have the Facebook group, Spapreneur Community. It is amazing. And I love talking to you guys. So make sure you're in there. That's free. Free. I thought we don't talk about free. Well, f- free for them. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's free, free for, for them. We'll look, do free things for them. Yeah. And look, Lynn and I are accessible there. <laughs> Woohoo! All right, guys, we'll talk to you next time. Bye. Need more actionable steps to get your spa headed in the right direction? Head to spapreneur.com where we've got the tools, tricks, and methods to making your spa as successful as it can be. Spapreneur.com.